Video streaming and video conferencing are widely used nowadays, especially in this pandemic, where the most actively used platform for communication and entertainment is video. However, video information is inherently hard to transmit over a limited bandwidth and error-prone channel. Various video artifacts are present in typical video signals, namely quantization or source distortion, which occurs at the source or at the video encoder, regardless of the channel conditions. On the other hand, the transmission distortion is mainly caused by channel impairments. And finally, the end-to-end -end distortion is the sum of the two previously mentioned uncorrelated distortions. Quantization or source distortion is directly affected by the degree of compressing the video information given the total available bitrate at the video encoder side. As shown, there are three uh, compression components in a typical video encoder. Hence, the more compressed the video information, the lesser the quantization distortion will be. However, the more compressed the video information, the more vulnerable it is when transmitted in an error-prone channel. Hence, the transmission distortion will occur depending on the channel condition and the degree of compression of the video signals. Note that the transmission distortion can be easily mitigated uh, by using traditional error control methods. It is important to note that the only present distortion for an error-free um, scenario is the quantization distortion. As shown in the figure, it has a decreasing um, relationship with the increase in video coding bitrate. For an error-free environment, it is intuitive that the total bitrate is allocated or should be allocated um, to the video coding side no, to, to minimize the quantization distortion. However, for the case of error-prone channel, the end-to-end -end distortion is now composed of quantization distortion and channel distortion. Hence, the total available bitrate should now be divided for video coding or for video encoding and for error control coding. This is to increase the resilience of the compressed video information uh, when transmitted. Note that uh, the minimum end-to-end -end distortion will occur depending on the optimum bit allocation between uh, the video coding bitrate and the error control coding bitrate. Furthermore, the severity of end-to-end -end distortion is also dependent on the types of video sequences, depending on the motion uh, intensity and the texture complexity. Um, note that there are um, sequences, like in the case of Yatride and Jackie, that are greatly affected by the error um, introduced by the channel. While there are some um, sequences, like the case in, of Honeybee and Beauty, with low motion intensity that are not significantly affected by the channel uh, conditions. Uh, in this study, we adopted the intra-refresh scheme to improve error resilience um, during transmission, no? where we where intracoded blocks are deliberately inserted in the in a given particular frame. No? So it is important to note that these intracoded blocks introduce redundancy bits, spending additional bits uh, or additional bit rate to improve the resilience of compressed video information. However, um, unnecessarily increasing the number of intracoded blocks in a given frame will tend to consume more bit rate, no? increasing the quantization distortion. Thus, the uh, problem now is determining the optimum or the best number of intracoded blocks in a given frame you know, um, that will minimize the the end-to-end, -end, the predicted end-to-end -end distortion, which is composed of the quantization distortion and the transmission distortion. In this framework, the distortion estimation unit or the DEU anticipates the level of end-to-end -end distortion that will be experienced by the frame 
uh, before encoding and transmission. On the receiving end, the video packet losses, which are caused by errors in the channel state, are concealed um, using the previously decoded frames to replace the lost video packets. Now, to quantify the end-to-end -end distortion and the quality of the received video sequence, so we simply compare the original sequence and uh, with the decoded sequence. No? The higher the PSNR value, um, the better the decoded video quality. In this study, we have also introduced a novel distortion model that predicts uh, the quantization and transmission distortion. So the figures shown um, uh, shows the the figures show the correlation plots between the actual and estimated end-to-end -end distortion for various test sequences and bit rates. In sequences with relatively high motion activity, like in the Yatride and Jockey, uh, higher intra-refresh rates have provided um, better quality than lower uh, refresh rates. No? This is for all error rates except at the zero error rate or at the noise-free scenario. Um, the figures show that in an error-free environment, unnecessary, unnecessary insertion of intracoded blocks degraded the, uh, the video quality no? due to the increase in quantization. Uh, distortion. This is uh, noticeable especially at lower bit rates where the allocation of bit resources is critical. However, at uh, under severe channel conditions, no, as shown in this figure, it can be generalized that the decoded video quality improved upon increasing the refresh rate. It is undeniable that the future of entertainment and communication is in the direction of super high definition and multi-view video streaming. This posed a great challenge due to its inherent huge bandwidth requirements to store and transmit compressed video information. Though HEVC is specifically made to compress high resolution sequences, the resilience of compressed video information over the error prone band limited channel is yet to be explored. Suppose this uh, multimedia streaming technologies are applied in a virtual reality classroom live streaming you know, or, or UHD real time telesurgery or in a real-time multi-view remote control application such as flight controller in this case. So in that case, this highly compressed video information will be subjected to channel impairments during transmission, possibly degrading the decoded video quality experienced by the receiving end. Imagine a uh, telesurgeon, a doctor who receives poor quality or delayed decoded images of his patient's open surgery video feed. Hence, um, the need for error resilient video coding and communication will undoubtedly be beneficial in the future. So on that note, um, on behalf of um, our video coding research group, I'm Angelo de la Cruz. So thank you very much for your kind attention and good day.